Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me is Vivek Kayar. Fresh highs for the Midcap Index. So goes with the name of the show. Vivek, we have to track that and the Ampy data as well. But first up, let's talk about the top headlines. You're right. Uh, took a brief pause yeah. yesterday, and then today it's back <laughs> to fresh record highs. A lot lined up on the show. But first, let's start up with the headlines. Stocks clock small gains ahead of tomorrow's market holiday. Metals and energy are the top gainers, while healthcare and auto are the weak spots. Midcap outperforms significantly. Colte Patel rallies after Motilal Oswal initiates coverage on the stock with a buy recommendation, citing the company's growing presence in MMR and Bengaluru markets. Adds that targeted project additions over the next six to nine months will enable 30 to 35 percent growth. Reliance Infra is under pressure after the Supreme Court sets aside 8,000 crore arbitral award and upholds DMRC's curative plea. The Supreme Court also said. That the arbitral award has caused huge miscarriage of justice and directs all execution proceedings in the Delhi High Court to be discontinued. Ramco Systems rallies over 18 percent after the company signs a multi-million-dollar deal with Korean Air to accelerate the tech transformation of an engine maintenance complex. Paisalo Digital also gains on the back of its quarterly business update. The disbursements are up 38% on a year-on-year -year basis and 121% sequentially. Assets under management also grow 32% on a year-on-year -year basis. Okay, all right. Those are the top headlines. But the breaking news now is the Amphi data that we have been getting. Um, a net equity inflow has come in at twenty-two thousand six ninety-one crore rupees, which compares with twenty-six thousand seven hundred crore rupees. This is on a month-on-month -month basis. It is um, lower than February, but higher than what we have been seeing in last couple of months as well. Uh, so. Uh, Small blip that we are seeing in the net equity flows, but that is what the market mood was as well. If we talk about the small cap and the mid cap funds, that's an important uh, uh, number to watch out for because we've seen stress tests, we've seen that big fall in the mid cap index in a particular time frame in the month gone by. So that is something that will be very important to track. I saw it briefly. The small cap flows have come off sharply, and that is something that should come up for you on the screen as well. Here, the large cap inflows they have surged, of course. That is something that was expected as As well at 2,128 crore rupees, which compares with 921 crore rupees. Um, the debt scheme outflows they have continued at 1.98 lakh crore rupees. Uh, the this is versus inflows of 63,800 crore rupees. This is the year-end phenomenon that we see usually. But as I said again, we'll have to watch out for what the small cap and the mid cap funds have done. That will be an important data um, that I'm looking at uh, and watching out for because so far we have seen that small cap and mid caps they have been in focus as well. Small cap funds, just to give you a reference, in February the inflows were at 2,922 crore rupees, and in the mid cap funds in the month of February it was at 1,808 crore rupees. And uh, it is come down in the month of March, is what we are seeing right now. In terms of the other data, ETF inflows they have come in at 10,560 crore rupees, which compares with 6,461 crore rupees. ETF flows have increased. Uh, so this is largely the picture. I would request my team to show me the data for uh, mid caps and small caps as well, because that is an important data that we need to watch out for in this particular month, because of uh, the, whatever we've seen in the month gone by. So we'll just wait for that data to come by in terms of what small caps and mid caps have done. Uh, I think that will take some time. But uh, do you have any data that you've seen, Vivek? Well, you know the first data that stands out, of course, is the large cap data. So the large cap data February was close to 921. This time around, the data is much higher significantly. The other key point that you know the market will be watching out for is going to be the SIP number. SIP number has been consistently trending higher. In fact, if you look at the SIP number in the months gone by, in February it was over 19,180 crore. So, in the conference call that Hamfi will host, you know, in a couple of hours, you know, that particular number will be revealed, and that will be something also okay. that the market will be taking cues from. Just uh, taking uh, this from you, the small caps have seen an outflow this time of 94 crore rupees, which compares with continuous inflows that we've been seeing. So, that's a big takeaway that finally there has been an outflow. And do remember that uh, the small cap index uh, or the small cap funds saw record high inflows in the month of June at 5,472 crore rupees. That has come off sharply. In February, it was 2,922 crore rupees, and now it's an outflow in small cap funds. So that's definitely the big headline that we have from these uh, from these numbers 
in terms of mid cap funds as well it has seen a sharp decline from levels of 2666 crore rupees in november it has come down to levels of 1000 crore rupees in the month of march yes of course it is uh, an inflow nevertheless small caps are the one which are seeing an outflow but uh, of course it's a big fall that we have seen in Certain mid caps as well portion of that could be attributed to the fact that you know in the month gone by you did see comments coming in from sebi in terms of stress test yes. being conducted you know as far as the mid cap and small cap funds were concerned so on the back of that you know certain redemptions may have been seen so we'll wait and watch by for in terms of more data that will come in uh, but uh, moving on uh, you know this is our special segment mid cap movers we have hormas to take us through the mid caps that are moving around in the session hormas over to you you know we've been highlighting over the last couple of days that there has been some exhaustion seen in the mid cap index and i don't think the broader markets like these kind of questions and hence it has made a new high in today's trading session so we'll start off with the stocks that are gaining in today's trading session sun tv is up 5 and 1/2% as is petronet lng concor is doing very well for itself tata chemicals on the back of the soda ash price rise and bs is up 5% as well in today's trading session a sector of the market that is doing very well is chemical stocks and sonal will talk about it as the show goes by and atul limited is the one that i wanted to point out though it was 5% higher as we last checked upl is up 3 and a half percent an interesting nugget here ever since the upl has left the nifty it's up 11% since then and ami organics is up 6% lakshmi and deepak nitrite also doing very well for themselves the metal stocks continue to shine bright and nmdc is leading the charts there 7% higher for nmdc hindustan zinc and sale also doing well the other metal stock which pro- probably is the stock of the day is vedanta and that is doing very well on the back of the upgrade that came from clsa and otherwise some positive brokerage commentary also from kolte patel and mcx and both of these stocks also gaining between 5 to 8% some stocks that doing well on the back of volumes and tanla platforms and jubilant in gravia 8.5% on very strong volumes godavari power as well similar gains as is eid parry with 3.5% and last Lastly, the small, the underperformers in today's trading session. Those will come up on your screen. Spark some not so good news with regards to one of its drug developments. Action Construction, IRB Infra, and Natco Pharma. Some of the underperformers in today's trading session. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Harmas, for joining us as always. Uh, let's take that mutual fund discussion forward and. Uh, Welcome a guest. Let's welcome Anthony Heredia, the MD and CEO of Mahindra Manulife Mutual Fund, joining us now. Anthony, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Well, I have to talk to you about that big outflow that we have seen in the small cap funds. What do you make of that? Mid caps also have ebbed. Uh, do you think there is a clear shift towards large caps now? Uh, yeah, hi, Zonat. Uh, no, I don't think there is a big shift towards large caps. I think there is a large shift towards flexi and multi cap. and i think it's a shift that's been in the works for some time now because if you look at the data even in jan and feb uh, flexi and multi cap funds were seeing increased flows i think what's happened in march is we've seen higher than usual redemptions in small cap i don't think you've seen gross flows come off that much but it's obviously resulted in a net outflow for the month which is the first for i suspect 15 months uh, but i think the clear preference we're seeing in the marketplace is for flexi and multi cap funds not as much for large because flexi and multi cap funds by definition in any case typically have 50 to 60% large caps oh. uh thanks for that antony antony you know just wanted to you to answer a couple of questions uh, number one march typically you know fiscal year and uh, do you see a phenomenon where you did, do see some amount of uh, profit booking or some amount of money being taken off the table uh, by retail participants in the broader end of the market which is the mid cap and the small cap funds and secondly do you feel that there has been an impact due to you know certain comments coming in from sebi in terms of stress tests also been undertaken uh, for these schemes so what has been the impact of that according to you so let me put it in two parts right uh, march there is a year end phenomenon that always plays out in the sense that a lot of non individual investors primary corporates take some money off their balance sheets in terms of their investments in liquid funds and arbitrage funds so you see that in this march data and that's true for march uh, for many years before as well so that's one side of it the second is i think uh, it's not really just the regulators i think there's been general commentary over the last 3 or 4 months on valuations being stretched in small and mid cap and i guess the conversations around stress test and all of that would have led to some profit taking for sure would be across retail and high net worth in my view uh, but early indicators in april seems to suggest that that redemption pressure seems to have eased but i continue to make the point i made in the earlier question which is 
I think there is a trend change. So the total gross flows in the industry are still intact. The, the net flows are broadly in line. It is just that the new category of choice seems to be flexi and multi. Okay, uh, flex and multi are the big choices now. Uh, what about uh, hybrid funds? Because, you know, there was an expectation because of whatever tax changes we have seen, it would move towards hybrid. It has actually fallen in terms of flows. How are you looking at this category? So the one reason for the flows to drop off is principally arbitrage, right? So if you actually deep dive into the hybrid numbers, arbitrage has typically tended to be anything between seven to 10,000 crores of net flows over the last two or three months. And it's actually negative this month because like I said, a lot of corporate investors who invest in arbitrage funds as well, take money off the table. Having said that, I would concede that work still remains to be done to make hybrid funds a credible alternative to fixed income funds post the tax law change in uh, March last year. My gut feel, and it is that's something we are working on, is I think the hybrid fund that one needs to focus on in terms of creating awareness is multi-asset. Because to my mind, a combination of fixed income, gold, silver, and equity is probably the most realistic hybrid alternative to fixed income. I hope that in the next few months, we'll have more pleasant news to discuss in terms of flows into that particular space. To my mind, multi-asset will have to drive the hybrid category's response to fixed income. I don't expect straight balanced funds and balanced advantage funds to do that. Okay, so you're saying that you know going forward, the trend is going to be, number one, look at hybrid funds. Number two, look at uh, flexi-cap funds. Uh, typically in the past, you know, you've been an observer in the space for quite some time. Uh, typically in the past, whenever you've seen some outflow come in as far as the mid-cap and small-cap funds are concerned, does the trend continue? How long do you see in an outflow coming? Or, uh, you know, so far we've had very strong inflows coming in there. So do you expect this trend to continue at least for the next quarter? I would expect this trend to continue for perhaps the rest of the year. Because bear in mind that as we speak today, uh, while we had a difficult march in terms of small and mid-cap parts of the market, we're already at uh, highs again, right? So I think a lot of investors are now playing the next leg of the rally through Flexi and Multi, which to their mind has a perfect solution, which is you have close to 50% in large caps, but you're not letting go of the possibility of small and mid caps continuing to perform. So my sense is over the next couple of quarters, Flexi and Multi cap funds will continue to gain the larger proportion of shares and consequently, because money in some sense is finite, small and mid-cap funds will see their flows perhaps not reach negative territory like it has in March, because that's a particular phenomenon related to conversation at that point. But I think you'll find that it will be a lot more tepid compared to what we've seen over the last year. Okay, so it could be tepid. Um, we also have another guest joining us now. Anand Vardarajan of Tata Asset Management also is with us. Anand, uh, your take first on the ebbing flows in uh, small caps, in fact, outflows that we have seen. And also wanted your word on the debt category. Uh, there has been an outflow this time. Is it just the year-end phenomenon that we have seen? And how are you looking at that particular category going forward? So as far as uh, small and mid uh, flows are concerned, I think up until March they've been they had been pretty strong. I think March, um, uh, MV had uh, you know there was this stress test which was put out, and uh, uh, there were different types of numbers which uh, emanated out of the stress test. And not surprisingly, I think uh, mid and small uh, uh, became. Uh, uh, you know, as, as a consequence, we saw mid and small uh, uh, flows uh, thinning in the month of uh, March. Uh, and I think what is interesting is if you were to look at uh, the large and mid numbers or large cap numbers, I think there is a bit of a shuffle which is happening there. So um, categories which are historically uh, large cap tilted like the flexi cap or large and mid or, uh, or say large cap. I think at the margin have uh, seen uh, much better flows uh, than their own past. Uh, to your second question on debt, uh, I think uh, March typically, uh, you know, has uh, many uh, triggers. Uh, you have advanced tax, you have the usual monthly GST outflows, and then you have the year-end uh, balance sheet pressures, which lead to a lot of uh, outflows. 
liquid has been a, a, a big category where we've saw, we've seen uh, very very large outflows. Um, it's almost uh, you know 20 25 percent of the category which uh, uh, we saw as an outflow. Uh, and, uh, you know, all this usually happens in the month of March, but this time I thought it was quite severe. Uh, I think the entire pack, I think not surprisingly, you saw uh, yields had shot up towards the end of March. Uh, even short-term rates had uh, were looking very, very attractive, primarily because of the very, very tight liquidity situation. And this time around, I thought it was uh, even more fierce than uh, usual. Uh, from an MF perspective, if I were to talk about, I think this time there was tremendous amount of uh, pressure, um, uh, you know, around the end of March, which okay. now has, of course, abated and now things are looking uh, very, very comfortable. But yeah, I think Thank uh, you. did go through a churn. Thank you so much to both Anthony as well as uh, Anand. You know, some very interesting uh, insights coming in there. We'll wait and watch by also for the SIP numbers. Uh, but, you know, let's now slip into a short break. We'll get you more on the markets and stock-specific action on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We've just digested and tried to understand uh, the numbers that have come out in terms of the mutual fund data. But today, one particular pack that's been doing quite well is the chemical stocks. Chemical stocks are buzzing in trade. Sonal, you track the sector very closely. What's causing the rally? Well, there are a number of things. There is a possibility and there's an opinion that may be the worst in terms of pricing pressure and destocking is over for the sector. So just take a look at some of the stocks. Uh, SRF, for instance, is at a 52-week high. You have Clean Science Technology. There is Jublin and Grevia, which is up 8.5%. Tara Chemicals is surging in trade. Ami Organics, some fundries as well, which is planned. Arkin Chemicals is the other one, which is up around 4.5%. Now, based on the conversation that we've had in the last couple of uh, weeks, uh, it is an indication which the companies are suggesting, which is, of course, very company-specific, uh, that the destocking phase is over. Vinity Organics, for instance, told us that FY25 will be 20 to 25 percent better than FY24. Looks like destocking is coming to an end. We spoke to the global chemical major Lubrizol as well, where they indicated that destocking the global chemicals industry is behind us, and demand and supply, that is balancing right now as far as business is concerned as well. Now, from Bloomberg, we got a data today that soda ash prices in China, they have been continuously inching up. They were up more than 4% today, and that is back near the 2000 level, which is the highest that we've seen in two months. Uh, it is, of course, China soda ash prices. Uh, Indian soda ash prices follow suit, but right now, that is the reason why there could be some possibility or positivity that, yes, uh, the worst is behind us. Now, we did get exports growth data for the month of March for some of these chemical names. For SRF, it continues to decline both on a month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. For Naveen Florine, there's a sharp increase, 120% on a month-on-month -month basis, which is led by the CDMO business. PI Industries has seen a decline both month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. RT Industries, that is the one which has seen an uptick both on a month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. And this is something that the management was indicating as well, that there is a recovery in discretionary demand. Atul has seen a similar trend. There is uh, and there's an uptick on a month-on-month -month basis. Vinity Organics has also seen an uptick both on a month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. But despite the sharp increase that we're seeing in stock prices right now, uh, if we look at how they are off their 52-week high levels, um, it is a big uh, number again. Naveen Florine is down 35%, Vinity Organics down 25%, Atul down 18%, Clean Science down 16%, Balaji Mines also down 15%, and valuations continue to remain at elevated levels. So that just tells you how overvalued or how premium valuations these stocks were trading at uh, as well. Motila Loswal in its preview note also suggested that they believe that situation is going to improve, if at all, only post the first half of calendar year 2024. The valuation multiples of the companies, they remain elevated with no real reason for the stocks to run up in the short term. So the earnings commentary from all these companies will be very critical to watch. We've got it from Vinity, we've got it from RT, or RT Industries. But what the idea from all the companies, because it is, again, very company-specific when it comes to growth. But yes, the generic idea why these stocks are rallying is maybe the worst is over. 
that will be very good news because uh, you know a lot of these stocks have underperformed quite severely. Uh, what I've been tracking today is Spark. Uh, Ekta flagged it off in the morning, so Spark today is under significant pressure. Spark is actually Sun Pharma Advanced, it's a subsidiary of Sun Pharma. Now, this particular company actually in the last couple of months was working on a very interesting molecule, and this particular drug was being studied in order for the company to go ahead and find a potential cure for Parkinson's disease. In the trial one, or in phase one of this particular drug trial, what actually happened was that the company gave some positive data points. But yesterday, in an update to the exchanges, what actually happened was that the company said that both of the studies for this particular drug did not meet the primary endpoints. So that the reason for which they were developing the drug, uh, that particular endpoint in which the trial was being conducted, what did not get met. And on the back of that, you know, market participants and analysts actually believe that this particular drug held quite a bit of potential. And since that hasn't fructified, you know, Spark today is under quite a lot of pressure. Okay, all right. So that is about Spark. The stock is a lower in trade by 5% in an otherwise decent looking market. We'll do one thing. We'll step into a break now. When we come back, we'll talk about more stocks. But right now, we have an announcement to share with you all. We are launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar, CNBC TV 18 Accelerate Personal Finance Handbook with Sonia Shinoy, where she'll be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, 11th May, 9 a.m. onwards. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth. Be it insurance, tax saving, managing your portfolio, retirement planning, there's lots to learn and lots to do. So whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is for you. We have limited seats, so do not miss this chance. Register now. Scan the QR code to register or log on to cnbctv18.com and we'll see you on 11th May. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. Well, it's been a buzzing Midcap Radar today, but we did speak to a lot of managements early in the morning. Sham Metallics is one of them. The company expanded into stainless steel flat products business. Earlier today, we spoke with the management of Sham Metallics on their outlook and expansion plans going forward. Listen in to what they had to say. If we uh, cumulative this all the plant that we already we are in stainless steel long product we are uh, in Indore where we have acquired this metal uh, co-op. So there also we are adding facility for this uh, further uh, uh, further processing to uh, increase our EBITDA margin. So this uh, twenty five thousand ton uh, facility we are adding for bright parts and eighteen thousand ton per annum for this wires. So if we con if we consider all this though we are expecting. Uh, 5,000 to 6,000 CR from this stainless steel. So uh, basically, margins, uh, uh, we can say that uh, once this uh, value addition stream start functioning, we will increase this uh, uh, supply chain material by EBITDA margin by 7,000 to around 7,000 ton per, uh, per metric ton, uh, 7,000 rupees per metric ton additional EBITDA margin we are expecting. So uh, we are we are uh, expecting this capital outlay of around 650 to 750 CR for all this. Well, the next talk in focus and another management that we spoke to today was IRB Infra. The stock slumps in trade after the arbitral tribunal ruled against the company in the NHAI case for the Ahmedabad asset. Also, toll collections have jumped 30% on a year-on-year -year basis for the month of March. Earlier today, we spoke to Tushar Kavadia, who is the group CFO of the company, to discuss the NHAI case in detail. Listen in to what he had to say. We have got the arbitral award uh, yesterday only, and uh, we were also being sat in with the award. So looking to the uh, award, if you see the, our claim was with respect to the competing facility uh, to the particular stretch, and which was why the claim was filed for the from the year 2015-16 when we when we uh, when we have seen the this competing facility has come up uh, parallel to our uh, stretch 1032 crores which was since 2015-16 which was filed in the, as a claim in our uh, in the arbitration uh, claim itself and uh, which uh, which was for a particular period. Now this is a continuous claim which will be for a year on year basis.
confidence of our investors, which include the strategic investor like Sintra, that continued. And we have seen this deal happening at the private invite level where they are acquiring the stake from GIC of 24%. And uh, with the valuation, what they are paying, there's a price is 67 billion for the acquisition of 24%. What we have seen, the valuation, uh, just doing the maths, it's like uh, uh, for the 10 assets which were part of, uh, which were operational, uh, it, was, it was almost two and a half times to the book. And uh, with that kind of uh, valuation or the fair deal, we see that the total valuation considering all assets uh, would be somewhere around 400 to 480 billion. Well, a very interesting conversation that we had with IRB earlier today. You know, the important part was, you know, the company said that they would be looking at uh, further legal recourse when it comes to the kind of arbitration award that has gone against them. But let's take a look at the markets. The mid-cap index yesterday saw a bit of a pause after a continuous 11-day streak. Today, you know, the market is back and today it's trading at fresh record levels. So what's aiding the market higher? both PSU as well as private metal stocks. Uh, these are the ones that are doing quite well. Look at names like NMDC, look at names like Coal India. All of these stocks are surging in the session. You also saw Vedanta today, you know, surge on the back of a CLSA upgrade. But that's all the time we have on Midcap Radar today. Your stocks when we return.